Enjoy a nice evening outside, but mosquitoes and other insects keep pestering you? Worried about Zika and other diseases carried by these pests? Could the Zap Light be the final solution? The Zap Light is a bug zapper with an LED light that works both inside and out. But does it actually work? Is it really better than the current options of bug zappers or bug repellent? What kind of restrictions go along with it? Are there any other unique features that shine through? Ashley Bishop brings us the story tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10. To me, it's my home. I've got sweat, blood. <laughs> uh, I've had plumbing work I've had to do. I mean, this is, I've considered it my home for six and a half years. A disabled Vietnam vet who recently underwent a liver transplant and his little service dog could be, in his own words, out on the street. It's a story we first told you about late last night out of Detroit Lakes. After your messages started pouring in, we started investigating. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric tells us how this appears to be a dispute among neighbors. So it basically either puts me on the street or forces me out of this area. I've lived in this town for over 50 years. Brian Fraser served his country in the Vietnam War. And for over six years, he and his service dog Rocky have called this place home, fixing it up little by little. So I re pretty much redid the roof and I've done some other work inside, re-insulating. I put new windows in it. I just had a, a liver transplant done in November, and my numbers have been off because of the stress that this has been putting on me. But Do from what, what Fraser tells me, this is a dispute among landlord, neighbors. Or... I'm more than frustrated. It dates back to when I first moved in here. I've had a six and a half year problem with the owners of the property next door, the old, the old onuses. Fraser says the onuses will spray chemicals in big clouds on the lawn every year for weeds. I went out and I asked him to quit doing it. He told me to go back in my house and close the windows. And the owners of this property, Jay and Beth Onus, are the ones who allegedly called the city about this rental property. The city came in, finding it's not up to code and that it violates city ordinance. There's some people that are willing to offer um, supplies and time to help me get this place in order, up to code. And like I say, the code violations are minimal. Brian Fraser tells me the code violations include not having ground fault electrical outlets, not enough smoke detectors, and no shutoff valve on the 1960s water heater. I contacted the mayor of Detroit Lakes, who says this is a very unfortunate situation, but they cannot set a precedent for violating their own city ordinances. I also tried tracking down the neighboring property owners, Jay and Beth Olness. Beth Olness told me I had to leave when I showed up at their house on Long Lake near DL, personally escorting me off their property. And she wouldn't talk, tell me if I could talk to her husband, Mike. All right, thanks, Bradford. Brian Frazier says he may be able to stay at the home if he can prove it was a rental property prior to the current city ordinance when it was enacted back in 1968. We talked yesterday about skipping out today to catch the afternoon game for the Red yes. Hawks, but yeah, look how that worked out. Yeah, yeah. it was a little <laughs> chilly, but it was a, definitely a game between these two. Kansas City in town for the final of this three-game series. We've got highlights and uh, plenty of heat coming from this one.